In solution 7b, we're going to be drawing a cumulative frequency curve, or otherwise known as an ogive, or ogive, based on where you are. Now, in the first question in part A, 7a, they had asked us to fill out the table, and here I have my table because I'm going to be using the information on my table for us to draw our cumulative frequency curve. So for part B, it states here that using a scale of 2 centimeters, to represent 10 years on the x-axis and 1 centimeter to represent 5 persons on the y-axis, draw the cumulative frequency curve for the data. And that's an easy 5 marks, okay? Now, last year when I was looking at uh, question 7, um, we had a similar question. They asked us to draw cumulative frequency curve on the May 2011 paper. And a, a couple of guys uh, weren't weren't sure as to how we came up with our values. If you notice here on my right hand side, and let me grab my pointer, if you notice here on my right hand side, I have already filled in my table and the values that I'll be plotting on my graph. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just simply going to explain to you how we came about with these values. Now, we, you have to use a table to, to uh, come up with the values, to derive the values. So let's just get into that. Now, when drawing a cumulative frequency curve, we must plot the upper class boundaries, okay, with the cumulative frequency. And let me just make a quick note here that these values here, my friends, are my upper class boundaries. These are my x values, okay? So I'll be plotting these values on my x axis and the cumulative frequency, these will be my y values. So I'll be plotting these, I'll be finding these values rather on my vertical axis. Now, as I've stated before, we plot upper class boundaries and cumulative frequency. Now, the question was asked in a previous video that persons weren't sure as to why why do we keep adding 0 0.5? And I'm just going to simply underline these 0 0.5s, okay? Persons, this is a key question that was being asked in previous lessons. Now, when plotting, well, if you should note here, and I'm going to place a 1 beside this row here, and if you should notice, under in the column, under age and years, this is what you call a class, okay? Now in my first class, this is my first class, I have 40 to 49, okay? Now in each class, my friends, we have two values. If you notice, I have a 40 here on this side, and then I have a 49 over here, okay? Now these two values, they have specific names. They are called the class limits. Now the 40, since it's lower, it's called the lower class limit and the 49 is called the upper class limit, okay? Now, to get our upper class boundary, what do we do? We have to add 0 0.5 to our upper class limit to get the boundary. Hence, we, we say 49 plus 0 0.5 is equal to 49.5. Now, let me get a little bit more specific with that. Um, as it relates to the upper class boundary. And I'm going to make a quick note here, the upper class class boundary, okay? And I'm going to show you how you find that or the essence behind the upper class boundary if you're not getting it, all right? Now, what do we do? We take 49, okay, my friends? So I'm going to take 49 and I'm going to say, this is my upper class limit. And the for the second class here, my lower class limit would be 50, okay? Hope you're seeing that. So I am saying my upper class my upper class limit in the first class is 49. However, my lower class limit in the second class is 50, okay? So I am asking myself, what is the boundary? What is halfway between 49 and 50? Well, if you should look carefully, it's just one unit that would separate 49 to 50. So halfway between 49 and 50 I would have to have a 49 here would be 49.5 okay and this is what we would call the boundary the boundary between 49 and 50 okay hence that is why we have to add the 0 0.5 to our upper class limits to get the boundary so that's just the essence behind how how we arrived by 
or upper class boundaries hope that example was useful and as you can see it we, we we did it with all of our upper class limits we add 0 0.5 to each upper class limit hence in the first case we have a 49 49.5, 59.5, 69.5, 79.5, and an 89.5, okay? And simply, the cumulative frequency is pretty much straightforward. We just simply look uh, in the cumulative frequency column and we just simply pick up those values. So for the first class, for our 49.5, we would match it with the first class there, which is 4. Um, in the first row in the cumulative frequency column and likewise 15, 35, 47 and 50. Now that is how we fill out the column uh, in the next video and um, we're going to show you how we plot these values on the graph and draw our cumulative frequency curve. Hope that this exercise was useful in showing you how you came about the values and see you in the next video. Bye bye.